Итак, дорогие друзья, продолжаем наш с вами мероприятие. Dear participants, let's resume our work. And we will try to follow our agenda. Okay, you, as um, someone representing St. Petersburg Culture Heritage Protection Bodies, so the floor is yours now. Let's listen to you. Good afternoon. You see, the weather can be very nice in St. Petersburg. Now it's not raining anymore, it is sunny, and as we agreed, Previously, I'm not going to speak anything about the federal law uh, 315 because we are uh, going uh, to uh, discuss um, uh, this law together with Sergei Mirzoyan in uh, the Ministry of Culture in Moscow. It will be on the 4th of June and because we sent our comments and criticism and also we outlined the possible ways out of the current situation. So this uh, a new, new version of this federal law, yeah, it leads to lots of uh, questions on our part because um, a lot has been changed and it means that we will have to uh, change our practice almost completely, especially, for example, this concerns this uh, new procedures uh, for protection obligation uh, documents, the uh, issuance and um, following. We thought that this uh, process was um, absolutely efficient um, in uh, St. Petersburg when we uh, had preliminary consultations with the owner, everything that should be protected, and then this owner, when signing uh, this uh, document, uh, they knew uh, fully what they were responsible for, and they understood what is necessary in order to protect this property. Of course, there were cases when the owners um, didn't want to uh, sign this document, but we had a positive court decisions when they were forced um, to accept these obligations. And about right now, about 12,000 um, protection obligation uh, documents exist in St. Petersburg and they will continue functioning. Uh, we still haven't seen the new form of uh, this uh, document and now we only notify the owners uh, to um, follow uh, Federal Law 73. This is a bit strange because this Law 73 is already something that they need um, to uh, consult, so I don't understand why we are supposed to send these notifications, but okay, if we are uh, stipulated to do it, um, and we hope that when the Committee on Culture approves this new form, then one of our departments will be issuing these new uh, type of documents. Uh, we are now transferring into the administrative uh, law area. It will um, cause uh, certain difficulties uh, because uh, previously uh, we, we uh, did it under another law and it was possible to penalize uh, the owners and uh, whatever the damage uh, was um, it, for one minor violation it is 100,000 rubles. So for one um, specific object we received almost 5 million of rubles of fines. And now we are moving um, into the administrative um, procedures, and uh, it will mean that uh, different courts will be reviewing and considering this. This is something specific for St. Petersburg, so I will uh, have to 
combine these areas, yeah, the federal law and our local practice. As for judicial practice, as for general jurisdiction courts, very often um, uh, courts uh, do not uh, consider this um, consider such cases if it is about property of um, insignificant importance and uh, or if there were insignificant violations and uh, one of the uh, problems of this administrative process. Unfortunately, I have uh, to say these quite negative things about the court. Sometimes uh, the courts do not consider uh, protocols about violations uh, because uh, they say that this document hasn't been appropriately filed. And very often, uh, these uh, judges, uh, they find some excuses and um, the administrative law does not allow the committee to sue uh, these uh, decisions. And we try to, do, to, to resolve uh, this uh, problem at the level of the uh, federal law, we would like uh, to have um, this uh, possibility so that we can somehow um, fight those violators. St. Petersburg has been a leader in lots of innovations in the area of cultural heritage protection. And the very first um, committee on protection of cultural heritage was established here. And also general public has been very active and uh, in, 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 in the, uh, the notion of the object of uh, protection of cultural uh, properties, it was um, first used here and the protected zone also is um, something that uh, comes from St. Petersburg. <laughs> Alexander Vladimirovich was absolutely right when he said that after some time um, regions won't have any opportunity for establishment of local norms in the area of dealing with cultural heritage uh, properties. So we have to follow the federal law. I believe regions could um, do a lot. For example, a licensing of uh, restorers. This could be done at the local level. This is one of uh, the recent examples, because right now we are in a very difficult situation. So I cannot stop um, our restoration program just because we don't have enough um, specialists with licenses. Right now, there's only 165 licensed restorers, but of course, there are many more um, working in the existing projects. Uh, and uh, St. Petersburg has its own specifics. And uh, we face lots of difficulties in law enforcement uh, practices. A lot of people are aware of that. Um, I know that many investors would like uh, to do some project here in St. Petersburg, but um, they are not um, fine with regulation in the regulation of historical buildings refurbishment. Historical buildings which were built uh, before 19... 
17 and in uh, the uh, towns around St. Petersburg before 1957. And if it is a monument, then okay, there is some um, object of protection, but historical buildings, um, so we cannot do anything uh, with them, uh, so we shouldn't even breathe um, near them, and they can be um, so if they are in a dangerous uh, condition, they uh, should be reassembled in the same uh, shape. So, and it is as of the 28th of uh, May um, this year. Yeah, so they should be uh, built anew uh, in exactly the same shape. Of course, it is necessary to subcategorize them. Uh, maybe uh, this a uh, new uh, system of identification of um, a new uh, protected properties will help us. When this system was introduced, and actually any person uh, may uh, send an application saying that uh, this person has identified um, uh, this um, historical monument uh, property. It's not necessary to be a specialist in this area. So, uh, any person may send us an uh, application. And in fact, uh, it didn't uh, lead to a great number of applications. And uh, we didn't receive uh, lots of letters from people. So wh 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 which term did you use? Public readership. Yeah, there was one case. It was uh, at the address uh, Mira Street 36. The investor had all uh, possible uh, permits and uh, the construction permit. And um, then we received a letter saying that this uh, building has a historical value. But it was uh, not uh, protected by that federal law 73 because the Cultural Heritage Committee cannot influence the process. Okay, we received that application, and even if we see that really uh, this is justified and by law uh, we um, need to take um, a decision within 90 days, but uh, the investor uh, is not stopped in uh, proceeding with the works. So that building was pulled down by the investor. In St. Petersburg, we use a wide range of law enforcement measures. So we use the civil uh, code uh, provisions and also the administrative uh, practice. But uh, courts and uh, prosecution bodies, um, they are sort of reluctant in meeting our demands uh, to initiate uh, criminal cases against uh, certain violators. This year, we have filed four uh, such uh, suits. Uh, so at some, in some uh, cases, they uh, didn't uh, even uh, start any uh, prosecution actions. And um, we have only one case when an offender was uh, charged with a criminal offense. It is not far from here. The central pharmacy uh, in Millionaire Street, uh, there was an illegal attic added to that building, and we managed to start uh, this criminal litigation. And by the court decision that uh, a person, you know, he uh, he, his uh, conviction was only 300 of uh, public works, and uh, he ha had to uh, demolish uh, this attic. And uh, this uh, person, you know, he keeps um, bringing uh, different designs, uh, trying to modify it. 
Okay, and uh, well, the case then uh, the next uh, proposal is rejected and so on. But uh, for the judicial system and law enforcement system, uh, he is um, implementing these measures, so he is following uh, the court decision. So we can do nothing with him. Then taking the property away from the owner, like our colleague from Germany was saying, this is this is an interesting uh, practice here. It doesn't exist in Germany, and maybe it is better not to have it here in St. Petersburg uh, either, because uh, this year, in January, we uh, had a court decision here. And it, it was about taking away Slepushkin's uh, house in uh, the town of Kolpino. Yeah, the owner many times um, had said that he was not going to um, restore uh, that building. Okay, and this uh, building in a terrible shape, it was taken away and uh, um, I, uh, I'm concerned that we won't be able to find a new owner. Okay, it is a two-story building and the second story is wooden. It is um, in a nice uh, spot um, on the river, but behind this building there are there's high-rise uh, development and it is surrounded by 25-story uh, buildings. So I doubt that anyone would like to use it as a summer cottage because around this person uh, thousands of people um, have their apartments so now it is a we have this uh, headache probably will um, we are negotiating it with um, the developers working here and I hope they will um, they will have this uh, building restored so Slepushkin so he visited Alexander Pushkin so uh, maybe he's not of a similar historical status but also an important person. Another uh, point I would like to tell you about is this cultural and historical expertise uh, inspection, which is now a requirement. And uh, in the latest recommendations and guidelines, from the Ministry of Culture, it was specified that this should be done for anything, even if it is a refurbishment of an apartment within a um, protected building. So we can discuss it, whether it is um, reasonable and uh, justified, but it, what is obvious that it adds more headache to both parties. The, the Cultural Heritage Committee of St. Petersburg, uh, you know, we have so many, uh, so many um, applications uh, for this and the prices are going up and even if this um, in this in a certain apartment a wall has uh, was moved during the Soviet uh, times and um, the cost of, of this uh, cultural evaluation report is about 500,000 rubles and uh, you know it is like war, war and peace uh, novel you know from the scientific point of view from the re historical research point of view it is fine yes they study the history of this building uh, from the very beginning and uh, I know that in Moscow it is not so acute and uh, Moscow specialists they say okay so use our experience okay you uh, prepare just several pages okay of course it meets all the requirements but it's not a thick volume of papers like in St. Petersburg. In St. Petersburg, we have heard all these complaints and I don't know actually how we should approach this problem. But we receive, uh, well, we hear certain messages from the Ministry of Culture that from the, uh, so it, it, it was too much to uh, require this. And a good idea is uh, taking uh, these uh, absurd, absurd uh, forms. Okay, it's called the State Cultural Expertise Ex Inspection, but the state uh, does not participate in it. Only experts are certified by the state. 
So the cultural protection uh, bodies cannot influence the opinions of in inspectors. On the one hand, it is good. On the other hand, it is not good, because sometimes experts believe that, okay, these uh, items should be protected. And uh, we do not understand why. And there were um, uh, examples when some very ordinary building was um, announced um, um, a protected building. And the uh, protected uh, items within uh, this building, you know, there were uh, fights uh, when uh, uh, when uh, experts uh, and uh, specialists of our committee, you know, I invited them and I locked them in one room and uh, I gave them an order, please agree on something and before you agree you won't leave home. This is what absolutely should not happen. Perhaps we want to change the very meaning of an expert assessment procedure. Perhaps we want just an opinion of uh, an expert whether or not uh, the property shall be listed or not. And after the opinion is issued, it should not be challenged. So probably this would facilitate the process of decision taking. Right now, if I get uh, an expert opinion, and if no further dialogue is possible, then I have uh, to go with, with what I get. And identified property for protection is the most inconvenient thing you can ever have. Interesting enough, a metamorphosis has happened to the places of interest category. There are six such properties in St. Petersburg, fortunately just six, and they enjoy most the most favorable regime. But now it's the toughest protection regime. It was planned uh, to use this protection regime for the six newly identified objects, but it's all now gone. It used to be approved by the Protection Agency, Heritage Protection Agency, but now I have to apply to the Urban Development uh, Body, and uh, after that I have to get an approval of the Site Development Agency. So it's become very difficult, and uh, the project implementation has come to a deadlock. This is the status that is much tougher as compared to the status of a historical monument protection. A very interesting thing has happened in St. Petersburg. We have uh, the Council on Cultural Heritage Protection under the government. They are considering all kinds of adaptation issues uh, for significant sites and so on. If you are not from St. Petersburg, you may have heard about uh, this so-called Kanyushinaya Square Agency. It's a very interesting site and it has an investor. Before the amendments, before the legislative amendments, they got all the permits and expert assessment opinion for redeveloping the site. They've got uh, the outcomes, uh, they've got the opinion of the cultural uh, and historical expert assessment. So the issue arose after all the agreements and approvals, and the council decided that the concept offered by the investor contradicts the purposes of cultural heritage production. And we have got an absolutely unique lawsuit, an investor challenging the opinion of the cultural heritage protection the court has accepted the case for consideration, and uh, I believe the trial will take place on the 4th of July. It's the reaction that is interesting, the reaction of possible investors. I am not saying whether the project is viable or not, because uh, there are very different opinions with this regard. and. Uh, the opinions are extremely difficult, uh, different. The trial has very vague perspectives. 
I'm not sure anybody will be able to prove anything, but the message is indicative. And the message is that uh, overly bans uh, may be counterproductive, because right now the, this site is simply unapproach unapproachable. You may have very different opinions uh, with this regard. Some of uh, the historical center protection advocates are now suggesting to announce a public fundraising procedure. But you know, we are talking one billion to one billion and a half. I don't think there can be any open public fundraising as successful as that. They, they haven't started it yet anyway. I'm afraid I have to draw a bottom line to my presentation. St. Petersburg and Moscow are very different in their approaches to interpretation of Law 315, Federal Law 315. We argue about possible interpretations, but uh, once I have promised, uh, I'm not going to blame Law 315 for anything today. We are decent people here, all of us. We are engaged in heritage protection. We can just make statements of facts. We, are, uh, we can say that uh, the new law has made our work much less convenient, to put it very mildly. I can take your questions, if any. Thank you. I would like to make a comment, please. Same as in Tolstoy's Anna Karenina, all the happy families are happy in the same way. But here, it's the contrary. We are all unhappy in the same way. I quite support to what my colleague has said. If the law, the, the new law, could more focus on greater competences granted to the local authorities, we would have benefited from it greatly. I personally believe that some of the regulatory norms are now obsolete, and it could be accommodated in the new law, but it was not. We are getting some new regulations imposed upon us, and we have to find and contrive the ways to comply with that. Back in year 2011, expert assessment results were several volumes, from several volumes of paper to two sheets of paper. So now we have adapted some regulations as to expert assessment, and uh, the state expert uh, must now just uh, provide responses to a concise list of questions. We have uh, state rates, uh, state tariffs for cultural and historical assessment. Alexei Vishnikov heads uh, the relevant body. And uh, now we cannot charge an immense amount for an expert assessment from e for each door handle. People can turn to this body if they need, if they have some private need for expert assessment. I know this works, and it's less expensive than go the old official way. Very soon we shall give the floor to Galina Malanicheva, and uh, we shall discuss uh, the opportunities of the NGOs. To what people normally don't understand is the irreversibility of what is happening to historical and cultural heritage uh, property. Once uh, a, uh, an asset is destroyed, uh, its uh, restoration or reconstruction will cost, uh, mil may cost millions of dollars. Uh, if we don't find a compromise, uh, if we don't uh, compromise our daily actions, uh, we may see a bulldozer tomorrow morning at some of the historical sites. 
we, do, we sometimes come across situations that we cannot handle and uh, we might think about what the public are offering to us uh, and we do get offers on setting up specialized agencies. We should not undertake a radical approach because the effect of that will be counterproductive. We shall lose a lot of protected areas or sites. We should come to an agreement and everybody needs to understand that. We don't want to make a, to produce a nice public image. We should not get involved in a fight against everybody, against every official, but that will be just populism, which again will be counterproductive. Our daily work may be not too visible, but it's important and it should be productive nevertheless. So our purpose is not to publicize ourselves. We must protect the existing heritage sites. There is no buffer to contain the private owners and businesses who want to take advantage of the historical heritage. They are not trying to save any of the heritage they have, they happen to own. But no rallies and no posters can stop private owners pursuing their own purposes. Whenever we have protests from the general public, we should channel them in a reasonable, formal way. That is the only way to obtain results. Otherwise, we find ourselves in a deadlock. We don't want any stakeholders fighting because that's counterproductive again. We might try to consolidate the public interests and uh, the interests of uh, the protection, heritage protection agencies. We don't want any fights between the extremities. Having said this, I'm happy to grant the floor to Galina Malanicheva, the President of Central Council of the All-Russian Society for Historical and Cultural Sites Protection. I shall make my presentation in, uh, from the point of view of my NGO, which is the only All-Russian NGO dealing with cultural heritage. I can say this because uh, this is proved by the rich history and experience of my NGO. Next year, the All Russia Society for Protection of Cultural and Historical Heritage will celebrate its 50th anniversary. The society was not founded from scratch. We try, when we were founded, we tried to take advantage of the rich tradition and experience of the public work on heritage protection that has always been done in Russia. We were set up as a kind of a legal successor of the 150 years of history of public discussion of heritage protection and preservation. The society, since the very first days of its operation, was based upon not, not upon the opinions of individuals, uh, private individuals. It was always based upon expert opinions. The society brought together local historians, amateur local historians, but also it brought together architects, restorers, conservationists, museum professionals. We have always wanted, and our founders have always wanted to bring together the public 
public assessment because back then uh, we had no state expert assessment. We were always based upon professional assessment. The society is calling itself a professional civil society organization, a professional NGO. Can you hear me? Okay. It could never have happened otherwise. I always say we, even though when the society was founded, I was not there, of course. But the organizers of the founders of the society could never issue any opinions or recommendations if not based upon experts in specific areas. Fifty years ago, branches of the society were set up in all the regions and territories of the Russian Federation, and they are still operational. Right now we have at least 65 branches in the, the Russian regions. The law of 1978, the law on protection and use of cultural and historical heritage, there was a provision that granted the society to coordinate, to approve the urban development documentation. Only two bodies, like the state agency of heritage protection and the All Russia Society, could sign the project documentation. All the public discussions took place upon the professional platform offered by the society. Looking back at that past time, I could say that this was a very favorable procedure. Decisions were taken based upon professional and uh, professional opinions and uh, public opinions. Uh, the society experts uh, conducted the expert assessment that, uh, made, that was then made into a foundation for any decision taken. But that was not just the right, it was also a lot of responsibility which structured uh, the work of uh, the whole society. All the decisions taken had to be well argumented and justified. When we signed an approval of a project, we were responsible for it forever after. The society did its work at the highest level of responsibility. Thus, an informal but efficient cultural heritage protection system was shaped. And uh, my society has always played an important role, an important role in the system. Apart from project approval, the society was involved in funding restoration works, which of course made the society more important. Uh, now we no longer provide any funding, we don't have any budget funding. Our activities are funded with grants and donations or the fees paid for providing certain culture-related services. Nevertheless, we are still pursuing the task which has always been the task of the society from its first days of operation. But the cultural heritage system was totally destroyed by the new law on cultural and historical protection. The Minister of Culture of the Russian Federation has totally refused the rich experience of protection activities. The federal law number 73, the notorious federal law number 73, has killed the right of the society to get involved in cultural heritage protection. It completely it is completely ruling out public participation. The 
this law turns the society into an amateur organization. That's what really happened. And of course, this made our work less productive and less efficient. However, all these difficulties did not prevent our society from being quite an influential society in Russia. Currently, we have lots of associations and registered and uh, amateur associations and organizations. There are many uh, people who are dealing not with the protection, the actual protection of cultural heritage, but only with politics uh, related to it. And there are uh, people, and actually journalists, they prefer to um, tell the general public about them rather than quite difficult, uh, routine, day-to-day uh, -day work of uh, cultural heritage protection. Our society is uh, doing a lot to popularize the cultural heritage. Within the uh, last 10-15 years, we didn't have enough uh, funds for restoration. Uh, at the same time, we focused our uh, operation on popularization work. We um, organize various festivals, competitions, we prepare publications, organize various events. The Central Council of the Society has lots of committees in all areas of the cultural heritage protection, and the work of these working groups involves um, not only uh, professional uh, specialists, professionals and specialists, but also the general public. Recently, our society and many other associations, public organizations, they uh, contributed a lot. And uh, we uh, try to combine all our efforts. And we believe that this is really, um, we, we can uh, boast of quite efficient work in the um, public uh, auditing uh, chamber. And this venue is um, an important uh, place for a discussion of some relevant uh, problems. As for our regional branches, they uh, participate in the work of their local chambers. And this, uh, of course, ensures us to improve our experience in working, of, uh, w in working with various uh, bodies, federal and regional. As for popularization work, as I said, we publish a lot of materials. But I would like to describe one project which actually was a new thing in our activities. This project was initiated by the Cultural Heritage Protection Committee of the Moscow government, and it was called Entry to the City, and it uh, combines lots of um, popularization techniques. Uh, people learn more about their city, and uh, there are various uh, quizzes and uh, questionnaires for people, so people learn more about architects of Moscow, and they learn more about um, protected buildings that are under restoration or that have been restored. So this is really a most interesting project, and um, this uh, and ensures uh, that uh, citizens of Moscow have greater access uh, to the cultural heritage buildings. Another element of our constant uh, work is monthly press conferences and uh, oh, we also prepare our opinion on um, various uh, events and the changes um, in laws. We do it all the time. So all these events organized by our society 
and our statistics um, demonstrate that uh, almost two million uh, people are covered and involved in these events every year. We try to expand this, and this is uh, in line with our mission. And our mission is organization and contribution and support of um, cultural heritage protection, and we are aiming to assist uh, the executive bodies. And together with other associations and creative unions, we have uh, these um, opportunities and we are uh, providing uh, this cultural and historical expert evaluation and we have among us um, experts uh, which have uh, a license provided by the Ministry of Culture and we can uh, provide uh, this expert evaluation. And unlike other experts who were mentioned, we do not raise our fees because we are used to uh, doing it just for free because it's part of our work, part of our society's work. And we um, also uh, are involved in um, the preparation of expert evaluations um, which are paid for uh, from the budget funds. Regional uh, branches of the society enable us to um, provide support to the uh, state bodies of cultural heritage protection. We are involved in monitoring and uh, public control over the use and operation of protected buildings, including the uh, including um, control over the using of funds from the federal budget. We keep uh, contacting the Ministry of Culture and we uh, keep informing them that our specialists may take part in um, in inspections uh, after completion of restoration and refurbishment works. Currently, how we see uh, better and more efficient support that we can provide in our uh, sphere. In uh, 2012, a uh, couple of years, recent years, there have been certain uh, changes in our work. We reviewed our approach to preparation of uh, expert evaluations and preparation of these evaluation reports. We always had uh, working groups and committees. Starting from March 2015, we um, established the expert council and uh, all members have been licensed by the uh, Ministry of Culture and they uh, have uh, not only a license but they have a great reputation and they are well known in this sphere. We have signed an agreement with a non-commercial uh, cultural experts council and as a result of this work, and this is our task, we are going to develop collective decisions in the area of cultural heritage future. And we want to support a certain professional level of cultural expert evaluation. We believe that specialists is a key to um, our work, and especially in uh, in culture, in history, in archaeology, they all are now members of this council. So we have this diversity of specialists, and they can consider not only expert evaluation uh, reports, but we also uh, provide methodology support 
report. So we may consult other experts how this work should be structured. And this is what we started with. So we provide methodology support. So Galina Ivanovna, could you please uh, complete your uh, presentation? What we have been uh, doing, we are um, now thinking in line with the uh, opinion of the uh, president of the Russian Federation that non-commercial organizations should be involved in uh, public um, functions. Uh, we hope that maybe some of, of these uh, functions now exercised by the uh, public bodies, they might be transferred to societies like ours. This is important for the public uh, to be involved. And we, as a professional community, we are quite responsible. And our opinion, we believe, should be listened to. And we should have a right to exercise at least some of uh, these functions. Of course, it should be uh, formalized in some way so that we can report for this. So, uh, as for approvals of development of historical settlements and um, uh, projects and plans for uh, future uh, redevelopment of historical areas, so we can participate in, in this because we have experts in this area. And one more thing, because the, uh, the licensing uh, committee um, and licensing of experts and specialists who request for uh, licenses uh, from the Ministry of Culture, we think that the, this whole uh, sphere could be transferred to um, some public uh, association or our society and uh, popularization of uh, cultural heritage. This is also one of our major functions. And I would like authorities from Moscow and St. Petersburg to support us in the following sphere. You know that there's uh, presidential grants, annual uh, grants, and significant funds are uh, provided uh, for culture development, but uh, organizations who operate these uh, grants, I know that experts uh, they invite they really, really consider the appropriate projects, the projects that are really necessary to support and enhance cultural heritage. I believe uh, this project should be in a separate group. And um, I believe another operator for these uh, projects should be selected. Do you, do you understand me? Yeah, so there are operators who distribute uh, these uh, grants um, and uh, the um, uh, public uh, chamber of the um, the Russian Federation approves these projects, and I believe our society can be such an operator uh, for cultural heritage projects. Thank you, Galina Ivanovna. We see only two operators in uh, this. If it is a public chamber, okay, so you have good contacts with this uh, public chamber, but I uh, here is some reaction uh, towards um, your proposals. You know, public uh, associations, they are very different, and uh, they are uh, different groups, and they have different interests. And uh, currently, um, you know, if you speak about some new um, organizations, they try to oppose um, all these activities. And, you know, all these new organizations, they um, propose uh, some drastic new measures. And and uh, it's like they are creating, they're making a lot of noise, but we don't see many results. As for your organization, I uh, 
believe that, of course, you do a lot uh, when we inform um, uh, people. And uh, in Moscow, for example, almost 100 uh, palaces, they belong to embassies of various um, countries. And your uh, event um, included excursions uh, to those places. That was a, really a great thing. Of course, people had to register in advance uh, because uh, the special security uh, policies. And, uh, Sometimes, you know, we see that there's a lot of discussions about a certain building and when, uh, okay, all uh, PR e events are over, then uh, nobody wants actually to refurbish it. So I believe that all this is just uh, PR uh, campaigns, uh, but not actually uh, protection of historical heritage. And very often we get together with such people and say, OK, what do you propose? Uh, who are the investors? And what are we going to do with this? And I am, as the head of a department, I, OK, I, uh, I can um, approve this. And uh, legally, I can give you uh, this um, power of attorney. OK, you can represent the uh, government of Moscow. OK, go and find investors and uh, then come to us with this project. And nobody wants to do it, because one thing is to uh, speak about it sitting uh, on a sofa at home, but another thing is uh, to be involved in this practical, quite difficult routine work. And I believe the general public is not ready to do this, and at the same time we are, don't want to transfer uh, these uh, functions, because it will be like, do you remember that joke, I want to buy one meter of the state border of the country? Okay, and what are you going to do with it? Next. As for your society, the society you represent, yes, we are always happy uh, to work uh, with you, and we are going to develop this work, and whatever you were saying about um, a more uh, targeted use of funds in the area of cultural heritage, protection. Yes, it's absolutely appropriate, and uh, if we can prov provide financing for certain festivals or tours, um, then um, it will enable uh, us uh, to uh, support this work. Thank you very much. And in conclusion of our um, discussion, uh, it is Vyacheslav Fatin. Thank you. We are, we are targeting simplification of uh, operations uh, at our adaptation of uh, historical and cultural protection sites. Uh, restoration is a complex project process, uh, and it's very different from capital construction. It's based upon multifaceted research, and it always involves specialized methods, which are very different from new construction. Restoration has a lot of problems related to adaptation of historical property to modern requirements. There are utilities to be provided, there is fire safety to be provided, and so on. Experts are now actively involved with the rule makers. The Union of Restoration Professionals was set up in 2014, and it brings together restoration professionals who are physical entities or private individuals. They, brought, they were brought together by common interests and professional interests. We did need, we have needed for a long time such a professional union that can help the cause of cultural and historical heritage protection. We are planning to take an active part in drafting and assessing draft laws relating to cultural heritage protection. We 
are planning to set up to facilitate creation of regulatory acts that will support, support adaptation of historical buildings to modern requirements. There is a lot of knowledge involved in preservation and protection of cultural and historical heritage. We need a clearly defined set of norms in the federal laws, clearly prescribing what can and should and what cannot and should not be done on historical sites. Today we have the federal law regulating restoration activities. That's federal law number 73. Also, we have uh, urban development codes uh, regulating the project documents, drafting and application. But right now, there are some f wordings uh, that are very vague, or some definitions that are very unclear with regard to restoration works, touching upon uh, bearing structures and affecting the safety. In this case, state expert assessment is needed, but that makes the drafting of documents more expensive, to say nothing of the restoration efforts themselves. Take two buildings in the same city, one of them listed and one of them not, both in fact being historical heritage. Then for one of those buildings, uh, there will be a simplified procedure for drafting the documents, and for the second, for the second of them, there will be a more complicated procedure invi involving state expert assessment, which of course is related to attractiveness of a project to possible investors, which is uh, totally undesirable. We also have to protect the users of the listed buildings from excessive attention of uh, protection agencies. We need a special document regulating expenditures uh, of uh, restoration works, and the rules have to be clear for everybody, clear and open. There are no such regulations as of today, and uh, there are no links uh, as to how the user of a listed building can comply with the requirements uh, in the use of the buildings and in, its, in their everyday use of the building and in its proper maintenance and operation. So uh, the rules uh, should be clear for everybody. We need a fair playing ground. Now, in what regards uh, restoration, we are using the old uh, construction rules and we are drafting the relevant state standards. In Russia, they are called GOST standards. Uh, this year, we are planning, uh, nine of them have been already approved by Ross standard and 11 more are planned for this year. Apart from these standards, uh, we have developed normative rules uh, regulating the the restoration procedures. Apart from that, we have the cost estimate normative base, which is now under approval, and it will eventually replace the old base operating since 1984. The Union of Restoration Professionals of Russia has brought together the practical experience and the lawmaking experience in this field, so hopefully we shall be able to draft laws that will be instrumental for preservation and adaptation of cultural heritage in modern days. Thank you very much, Mr. Fatin. You are, but you know, you are a successor of Voltaire. You are saying that uh, something really amazing, but could you please clarify? As of today, the, the practice is as follows. When we start restoration works from zero, 
or do an integrated complex of restoration works. We have the documents, of course, the project documents. We, have, we do historical and cultural expert assessment. That's all clear. But if it's some partial restoration effort, for example, restoration of a building's facade, well, in Moscow, we have the regulations for that. But federally, we don't have any guiding documents. So once we want to restore a facade of a building, we have a huge set of documents to complete, and that takes the restoration period far into the autumn season. So we need more clear regulations. For some works, we might, we might have and we need a simplified approval procedure and a simplified documentary support procedure. That's right. We have no clear separation between such uh, definitions as reconstruction, current maintenance, capital repairs, overhauling. The, uh, the definitions are overlapping, and for each of these definitions, there is a prescribed funding procedure. So it is difficult to discriminate between which site or which building is undergoing which procedure. And we are talking uh, uh, millions of uh, dollars of investments, uh, uh, f one, half, one and a half million billion rubles has been invested into a church restoration in Moscow, the Clement, St. Clementius Church. And uh, we are sometimes calling it maintenance, but in fact it's complete overhauling with replacement of all the utility lines. There is a huge confusion. Also, nobody has cancelled the federal law on technical safety of buildings. And that has direct relation to adaptation of listed buildings in terms of their fire safety. And there are some things impossible. I cannot attach a second fire exit to St. Basil Cathedral in the Red Square. The special technical requirements, of course, are all there, but uh, we have and we have to reasonably comply with them wherever possible. Back when Shoigu was the emergency minister, he provided the clarifications for some of the listed buildings in terms of their safety and security. The technical regulations should, of course, overrule, but it is not so under the new law. The Urban Development Code ad advises to take uh, the technical requirements into consideration, which is a very vague wording. Some, well, anybody can claim that uh, they are taking some things into consideration, but uh, we now have to take care of the costs, as you have said. Costs, uh, the state standards, uh, are a document uh, of uh, recommendation nature. I cannot impose any sanctions if somebody is not complying with ghosts. The ghosts do not allow you to do anything. If uh, any supervisory agency blames me of uh, violating a ghost, that does not really mean anything. We have to we can only prescribe ghost compliance in contractual documents, but we cannot apply them to any private sector companies. The ghosts are absolutely irrelevant, legally irrelevant, when we use private companies for any restoration or renovation projects. This is a matter of principal importance. It's a matter of professionalism and it's a matter of legal compliance. Now, to draw the bottom line, let me refer to what Galina said about the civil society involvement. You are an NGO, I mean the Council of the Union of Restoration Professionals. There are hundreds of sites or buildings under restoration in Moscow right now, but you can't find any information in public domain. We can only find information of what has been destroyed or demolished, but really no information on 
ongoing restoration projects. I am now appealing to the uh, society of to the, to, the, uh, to the Society of uh, Historical Control Sites Protection and to the Union of Restoration Professionals. Please take advantage of the global experience in your areas. Awareness is uh, possible to, is something possible to have. You are not interest, if you are not interested in it, then you should. There are press releases, there are, there are websites, this is possible to do. You need uh, to pursue an adequate information and awareness policy. People beyond this building know not, know, not, don't know much about the laws. They are not legally aware of your activities. They go by the news from broadcasters, and the broadcasters know very little about the work you do. Of course, uh, we have uh, to publicize the professional skills of people involved in restoration, for the, if only we have to do that for the investors. Otherwise, uh, what we do is simply getting no coverage at all while it should. We have to make some clear statements. We have to provide some stories to raise public awareness. We should cover professional award procedures. I know personally many restoration professionals. They are top qualified people with uh, decades uh, of years of experience, but they are never indicating any interest in raising their own and their profession's public image. Of course, everybody should uh, work in their own professional field, but please become advocates of your profession. Tell the society about the gold medal in Denkmal, but nobody knows about it. Restoration award winners should be welcomed in Russia like Olympic champions, and uh, this is in our common interest. We are ready and willing to provide you every possible support on the part of my department. May have may interfere, please. Now, with regard to the state sta ghost state standards, we have only made the first step. Our clients use them. We cannot force anybody to abide by the ghost standards, but about 80% of the work we carry out is in compliance with the ghost standards. Uh, we are also drive, drafting the technical regulations for cultural and historical heritage protection. We are now preparing a project for public hearings. Probably we shall complete the effort by the middle of this year. We are in cooperation with the emergency ministry. Before, we tried to talk to them about heritage protection, and they simply could not understand what we are talking about, because they are busy saving people. But now they understand what we do, and they are ready to review our draft regulations when ready. With regard to awareness raising, we're just starting this effort. Thank you. Dear colleagues, this completes our agenda. It's a shame we could not have a presentation by the director of the law department of the Minister of Culture. Unfortunately, Madam Ramashova could not make it here in due time. Dear colleagues, I believe we have had a fruitful discussion. We have received a lot of useful information. The presenters will stay around, and you are welcome to talk to them in private. We still have the lunch break and the coffee breaks to proceed with our conversation in an informal way. Thank you for attending this panel. 
discussion. I hope you have uh, received a lot of useful information. I apologize uh, for the flow of emotions, but uh, this is an indispensable part of our subject. Our subject is, in fact, uh, on the edge. Uh, it's in between legal aspects and uh, the topics relating to art. Thank you for being so professional. Let us thank our foreign colleagues for their most fruitful interference. And we want to take every possible advantage of uh, the Western European experience. We want uh, us uh, to take advantage of uh, the work already done, whichever country we are talking about. Thank you once again.